Yes, I know what you're thinking, it's a Jaguar E-Type Roadster, the quintessential British sports car, with a sonorous six-cylinder engine up front, central exhaust sprouting out the back and unlimited headroom above. But hang on a minute, because this is no regular E-Type. That's not the noise a Jaguar E-Type normally makes. This is a Jaguar E-Type, it's a Series 1 Roadster. It's bloody gorgeous as well, pale metallic blue. And it's a typical British summer's day, I've got the roof down and it's sort of raining a little bit. And this doesn't have an engine in, it's electric. This engine has been taken out, the gearbox has been taken out. And it's been replaced by an electric motor. some might say. The future, some might say. This is a kit. It's made by a British company called Electrogenic. I'm just turning around. I'm driving around an airfield near Bicester. And what they do is they produce the kit for other companies to offer alongside other restoration services. So say you take your E-Type Jaguar to a restorer and you can say, yeah, I want new paint, I want new interior, I want satellite navigation and Bluetooth and LED headlights. Oh, and there's a box there that says electric. I want that as well. And they then fit this kit that's made by Electrogenic. It's a bit like buying a computer back in the 90s that said Intel inside. This is a Jaguar E-Type with Electrogenic inside. Lots of back and forth today on a runway. Yeah, the brakes are still quite original. <laughs> so the engine gets taken out, the gearbox gets taken out, but nothing is um, irreversible. This whole change is reversible. If you ever want to put the engine back in, you can. And there's no high voltage cable work required by the installation company. And it means the restoration company who doesn't specialise in electric cars, can still fit this kit to the electrogenic standard. And they can do all sorts of clever things with it. They can alter the torque curve, they can even leave the manual gearbox in, if you want. This one's been made to feel as original as possible. All the switch gears the same, we'll come to that in a minute. It's even got an exhaust on the back, which is a little bit odd because it's not connected to anything. It's just sprouting out the back. But then if an E-Type didn't have an exhaust sprouting out the back, it would look really weird. So that's still there. Like I said, lots of turning around going on today. <laughs> right, let's put it into sport mode. So we're normal at the moment and this Eco and then sport. Once I've got past the photographer, I'll go a bit more quickly. Incidentally, this car, the, uh, the customer wants it to look as original as possible. So as I say, it's still got the exhaust on the back and um, all the switch gear inside is original. There's obviously no gear lever, but otherwise the switch gear is as it always was. And to flick between the driving modes, you use the map switch. Now that's not navigation. E-Types didn't have navigation. They had a map light came on to illuminate your printed map like it was 1968 all over again. And there are three stages on that switch so you can flick between normal, eco and sport. It's quite aggressive regen in sport mode. Right. And quite aggressive acceleration too! <laughs> oh, got to remember the brakes are old. <laughs> Well, the speck of them is old anyway. Right, let's go onto the runway and give it the beans. That's 60! Uh, slow back down, because I'm not really sure how far I'm supposed to go. <laughs> uh, I'm just sort of driving around on a runway. Let's go again. That's about 70. That's 
plenty, isn't it? That's absolutely plenty. When you lift off the accelerator from high speed, there isn't much regen, which is how normal electric cars work. But if you lift off from slower speed, there's quite a bit of regen. All three versions of the electrogenic E-Type send their power to the rear wheels, of course. The entry-level car has 120 kilowatts, which is about 160 horsepower, and the other two are about 150 kilowatts, or just over 200 horsepower. All three have a top speed of over 100 miles per hour, and their 0 to 60 times range from just under 5 seconds to around 6 seconds. The battery capacity options are 43, 48 and 62 kilowatt hours and those translate into driving ranges of 150, 160 and just over 200 miles. All three have CCS fast charging and a fast cabin heater so you can use them in winter. Electrogenic says the car with the largest battery weighs about the same as the original E-Type and the other two are actually a little bit lighter than the original car. And as for the price, well, that depends on where you get your electrogenic kit from. So is this still an E-Type? Yeah! Well of course it is! It's had a heart transplant. But you could say it's been fitted with a pacemaker. Is that a problem? Well it depends what you want from your car, doesn't it? A lot of Electrogenics customers, they've inherited cars like this. They don't really know what to do with them. Or they don't want to deal with the the faff of an engine and of oil changes and of things going wrong and, and pollution of course they want to drive the car in a city perhaps there are plenty of people out there who want a car like this they want to look cool because you always look cool driving an e-type don't you they want to look cool they want to drive a classic car that feels like a classic car it steers like one it brakes like one but they want it to be reliable they want it to be easy to drive so they can use it more often that's exactly what this is. It's the everyday E-Type. No power steering, obviously. <laughs> it might not be as engaging. Of course it isn't. There's no might about it. It's not as engaging. That's a metro about E-Type. Of course it isn't. But, but, I live in London. And I've got a Mazda MX-5, which I really enjoy. It's a manual two-seat convertible. A little bit like an E-Type. A little bit. Go on, give me that. And driving up here today was bloody awful. It was horrible. I was stuck in traffic. It took three hours to go less than 70 miles. It took two hours to go about 10 miles. And I was a bit fed up with the manual gearbox and with sitting in traffic with the engine running because my car doesn't have stop-start. With this, I'd look really cool, or the car would, and it'd be an easier drive. It'll be much easier. So perhaps you have two E-types. Perhaps you have your town E-type, this one, and then your country E-type. One with a manual gearbox. Or you just have the one. Because the world's going electric. We know this. It's happening pretty quickly. And classic cars are exempt for now. No one looks at classic cars really and says, oh, they're terrible polluting machines and they shouldn't be on the road because they don't get used very often. But that day will probably come. And unless the future is synthetic fuel, which it might be, we still have tailpipe emissions for that, of course. If the future is not synthetic fuel and the future still involves outlawing all internally combusted vehicles, then this is the answer. It has to be. And if it didn't exist, if this technology and this service didn't exist, well then neither would this car. Eventually, presumably. So what would you rather have? A future where every car is electric and the climate is saved, but every car looks a bit boring, or every car is electric and they can still look like this. I think I know what I want from a theoretical future anyway. Well, none of that might happen. But for now, today, there are still people who want cars like this. There are still people who have E-types and want them, I'm falling out the seat here, 
<laughs> I, I want them to be electric. Good for them. An electric e-type will probably get driven more often than a petrol one. It'll be seen more often by people who say, wow, look at that. And that's half the joy of owning a classic car, isn't it? It's that you get to not show off as such, but you, you, you get to make everyone's day by driving past them. So what if it doesn't make a noise? What do you think? Is this the future? Is it the only future? Is it something you want now in the present, in 2023? For some people it is. And well, it's quite fun sort of dicking about on an airfield. I actually think this car makes most sense where I came from this morning in London. I would happily sit in traffic in this car because I've got a beautiful wooden stereo in front of me. I've got that E-Type bonnet. I've got a car that Enzo Ferrari once described as the most beautiful car in the world. And it's easy to drive in traffic and it's not polluting anything. And I can drive past a school or a, a, a village hall and not feel guilty about belching out fumes. That's got to be a good thing, hasn't it? And yeah, sure, when I get onto a country road, I can't change gear and I can't listen to the beautiful engine. And I will be sad when I can't hear those things anymore. At least I should be able to see them and that's the point of this car. There's a lot more to come from Electrogenic. I went into their workshop today and lots of things under covers that I can't look at and I can't talk about. What I can say is they also do a drop-in kit for a Mini, for a classic Mini. And they're looking at doing drop-in kits for a few of the cars as well. And they also do a handful of special projects every year, bespoke projects where people want rather special cars turned electric. I told them I don't want them to be taking V12 Columbos out of 1960s Ferraris. Get them across the line if they do that. But for now, it's a successful business. Isn't that what we want? It's a successful business. And it's making sure classic cars stay on the road and the owners of them get to enjoy them. No matter what they want to get out of them. I like that we live in a world with choice. You can still drive your old E-Type with the engine if you want to, or you can do this. And who are you, who are we, petrol heads, to say that that can't be done? The owner's still enjoying their car. They still appreciate it. The owner of this one, who hasn't taken delivery yet, so I do have to be careful. The owner of this one wants it to look as original as possible. They want the switch gear to remain in place. They want the exhaust to remain in place. They appreciate the history of the car, the heritage of the car, want to be able to drive it more often and enjoy it more. That should be celebrated. Anyway, that's quite enough of me talking because I'm losing my voice shouting over the wind. I hope the audio has been okay on this. I hope you've enjoyed it and um, do click like, do click subscribe and um, there'll be more videos very soon.